Hello students, in science and technology part 2, we are going to see a new chapter, Cell Biology and Biotechnology. This module is the first lecture of this chapter. Before moving into the chapter, let us recollect our basics. First, what is a cell? A cell is a structural and functional unit of any living organism. You can see the structure of a cell in this slide. Then, the cell gives rise to tissue. Tissues forms organs, then organs form organ system. We know this order. Then, what is a tissue? Tissue is a collection of group of cells that perform similar function. If we want a tissue, the tissue, all the cells in the tissue performs similar function. We know that there are four types of tissues. We have learned already in our ninth standard. The four types of tissues are epithelial tissues, connective tissues, muscular and nervous tissues. So, for example, we know what is an epithelial tissue. An epithelial tissue is a tissue that, that is a covering of any organ. So, it performs or it lets ions and molecules to pass through it. Like that, we know that all the other different type of tissues like connective tissue, connective tissue connects the parts of the body, then muscular tissues and then nervous tissue. Which technique in relation to tissues have you learned in your earlier classes? We have learned plant production using tissue culture techniques. Stem cells are used in this purpose. So, what are the various processes in tissue culture? The processes are initiation, multiplication, rooting and shooting, primary hardening and secondary hardening. We know we will be using a growth medium to enhance the full growth of the plant. First, certain chemicals will be used for developing the root and then shoot separately. Then, the grown plant will be transferred to the soil and will be grown for some time in the lab condition. Then, the successfully grown plants will be shifted to the soil for further growth. These things we have learned in our 9th standard. Hope all of you remember this diagrammatic flowchart from your 9th standard textbook. Now, let us move on to the chapter. First, what is meant by cytology or cell biology? The study of cell, its structure, types, functions, organelles, cell division and many other aspects regarding cell falls under cell biology. Now, why should I learn all this? What is the purpose of learning cell biology? The research in the field of cell biology have made revolutionary changes in the field of human health. In India, institutes like National Center for Cell Science Pune and INSTEM Bangalore are established for dedicated research in the field of cell biology. We have learned about plant tissue culture using stem cells in our 9th standard. So, does that mean that the word stem cells are limited to plant cell? No, they are not. Stem cells are a special type of cells present in multicellular organisms. They give rise to all other type of cells. They play an important role in the process of healing wound. We know that the fusion of male and female gamete gives rise to the zygote. 
the zygote at the early stage of development will be a unified mass of undifferentiated cells that is the mass of the cells will be same alike those mass of cells are called stem cells these stem cells will further develop and get developed or differentiated into different types of cells so those different types of cells form tissues and hence form different organs this development of mass of cell into different type of cells is called differentiation the stem cells are present in umbilical cord we know umbilical cord is the one that connects the fetus with the mother apart from umbilical cord the stem cells are also present in red bone marrow adipose connective tissue and blood using these stem cells it is possible to develop any particular type of cell and hence the particular organ during the development of embryo the stem cells are present in the blastocyst stage you can see in the figure 1 the blastocyst stage and also in the second figure how the stem cells are being extracted from the red bone marrow stem cell research is a revolutionary aspect after cloning in the field of biotechnology depending on the source the stem cell can be differentiated into two types they are embryonic stem cell and adult stem cell the embryonic cells before differentiation are called embryonic stem cells when the zygote develops it undergoes repeated mitotic division mitosis is a type of cell division the cell differentiation starts from 14th day of conception after differentiation the cell will be developed to various types of cells like osteocytes which is nothing but bone cells hepatocytes which are liver cells and neurons a total of 220 types of cells are formed from single type of cell this ability of a single cell being developed into different type of cell is called pluripotency if these cells can be collected well before the differentiation begins that is during fifth to seventh day of conception then by adding certain chemical stimulus a desired type of cell can be grown so that a desired type of tissues can be developed which can be further grown into desired organs using this we can repair the degenerated part of any organ the technique of stem cell cultivation is shown in this figure you can see stem cells are extracted from the blastocyst stage and cultivated so that they will be converted to different type of cell here you can see blood cells nerve cells and muscle cells being cultivated using stem cell cultivation next let us see what is adult stem cell stem cell can be harvested from grown up adults as well the stem cells are found in red bone marrow 
adipose connective tissue as well as blood. The stem cell can be collected from the umbilical cord soon after the birth. Okay, what is the use of collected stem cell? The use of the stem cells are classified into two types. One is for regenerative therapy, the other for organ transplantation. What is regenerative therapy? The name itself says we are regenerating a certain type of cell. In regenerative therapy, it can be used for a cell therapy. Means you can regenerate the dead cells in diseases like diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's where the dead cells can be rejuvenated or regrown using the stem cell. The other type is to produce blood cells in conditions like anemia, leukemia and thalassemia. Leukemia and thalassemia are types of blood cancer where the patient needs blood transfusion very often. Using stem cells, if we can produce these blood cells, it will be of great help for the patients who are suffering from these diseases. For organ transplantation, using stem cell, the organs can be fully grown and transplanted to the patients who are suffering from organ failure. These are the main uses of stem cell research. In this figure, you can see the stem cell being grown into different types of cell like muscle cell, fat cell, bone cell, blood cell, nerve cell, epithelial cell, immune cell that is nothing but our WBC and also sperm and egg. Let us summarize what we have learned in today's lecture. Cytology is the study of cell, its types, function, structure and all other aspects of cell. Stem cell is a single type of cell that can be developed into all other types of cell. The cells of the embryo before differentiation are called embryonic stem cells. These stem cells can be harvested and can be developed into desired cell in lab condition. Adult stem cells are the stem cell that stay longer in grown adults. They are present in red bone marrow, adipose connective tissue and blood. The stem cell can be used in regenerative therapy and organ transplantation. Learn about preserving stem cell and also grafting in plants. We will see more about this chapter in our next lecture. Thank you.